we're going to make a group frequency distribution table. I have the final product here, but I'm going to show you how to build this up in Excel. And I have it laid out with different classes here. We're going to do it generally at first, and then we're going to add in some more stringent requirements to the one we're going to build. So let's take this off the screen. Now I have a blank workbook right here. What we need to do is label some things. So I'm skipping, let's go, let's skip three by three space here. So I want to go just label this with class like that. I think you just do it once and you drag with the black plus sign that just continues the pattern. Eventually, I'm only going to need 10 classes, but I just built more than I need here. Now I'm going to number these. I am starting at zero. Um, if that's a big problem, if you want one here, I'll show you how to change that at the end. This will make our math work out uh, more easily. So these are my class numbers. I want to min. Uh, I do want to max also. And in between, I'm going to have a minus sign or a dash. And oops, what's going on? Minus, all right. I'm going to make that column way smaller. I also want the minimum to be shifted aligned to the right, the max. And again, I'm editing the entire column and the entire column on the left. All right, you could just start filling in values, uh, but what I want to use is a consistent width and an initial value. So my initial value I'll call start. Actually, no, I'll do the width first. With uh, initial value or start. All right, let's take an easy uh, column with like five. 10 is pretty easy to uh, think about as well. We're gonna change this later. Uh, starting, let's just start it at one. Uh, we'll modify this in a minute. And you'll see our whole table will change down here. Okay, so I want the initial class, the first class, to just have this the min value to be the start. So I'm going with equals, and then I'm clicking up on B2. You can, of course, type B2, enter. That'll get the minimum. Uh, now the maximum, think about the width. What would the maximum be? Uh, I'm counting with my fingers, so I'm going to count five. So starting at one, one, two, three, four, five. So I'll go up to five. And I do want to put a dash in between. It just makes, uh, oh, wow. So if this ever happens, which happens to me all the time, just press escape. If you're editing a cell and other junk starts to jump in there, so I just want to put a dash here, enter. I want to fill all these in with dashes just so it looks nicer. All right, so the first one goes one to five. The next one's going to go six, starting at six. Um, and then I want it to go up again by five to the maximum value. So you can count on your fingers, but let's start to be a little more reasonable. All right, one and five now almost works to take this value oops, equals this value plus width, which is right up here. So that's B1. So it's F4 plus B1, enter. Unfortunately, it went to six. I don't want six, I want five. So double click it, and I need to do actually one less. So I'm doing the minimum value plus the width minus one, and that will give me the five that I'm looking for. Uh, I can duplicate this down, and uh-oh, what happened here? So this one is uh, width plus uh, or F4, which is that minimum value plus B1, the width, minus 1. And now we're going to double-click here. What happens here? It uses the start value, not the width. So I, I want this one right here to always be B1. So I could fix it by dragging, but that's not a good permanent solution. That will fix it here, uh, but a good permanent solution is to go B dollar sign one, and that means it won't change as I drag it down in the future. I better 
do the same thing to this. So that dollar sign just means always use B1, even if I drag the cell somewhere else. All right, now we can test it out. So I deleted that, and then we'll just drag this down with the black plus. Boom, we get 10. Okay. So I'm pretty happy with the way the max is working here. Um, the minimum, I want to automate this a little bit more. So I started with B2. You can see that right here. Uh, Let's think about lines. Let's do a little bit of a math review. Y equals MX plus B. Oops. Y equals MX plus B. I'm not, I'm just trying to type in some text here, not an actual Excel formula. All right, in this, B is the start. The starting value is B. So I'm gonna label this with a B right there. <clears throat> The width is how much it goes, uh, changes by each time, how much it goes up by each time. That's represented by M, the slope of the line. So if I go over one, it goes up five. So it's the width start. All right, now what about the X? The X is what changes each time. The X is represented by this column right here. So I'm gonna label this with an X. All right, so the minimum now is gonna be equals so we have the M values in B1 times X, which the first time around will be this E4. So that's M times X plus B, which is in this B2 cell right there. And I'm gonna hit enter. And we still have the one, that's great. I'm gonna delete the six out of here. Now if I take this and duplicate it down once, what the world's going on? It still says it's a uh, one. I was hoping that would be a six. So what's happening here? Well, it shifted that down, shifted that down, and unfortunately it's writing on top of uh, this E5 right there. I do want E5, but I wanna keep it on the B1 and the B2. So I need to go in there and put those dollar signs again. Don't want those shifting around. So that's gonna keep the purple and the blue, the B1, B2 uh, in the upper left corner is gonna keep those values there. All right, now this is the good formula with the dollar signs here. Back in the previous cell, I don't have the dollar signs. So fast way to do this, take this black uh, what do we call this? I call it the plus, but it duplicates in a smart way. And we're gonna overwrite what's up there. So I just dragged it up. And then if you look, it has exactly what I would have typed in a second ago. All right, we're about ready to uh, use Excel's auto, uh, automatic features here. So now I have this nice formula. I get to drag it down here. And there we go. It goes up by the width each time. Now, I think we've already fix these here, so I'm gonna drag those down. And there we go. This is the min max. Uh, you could, if you needed more classes, we're not gonna need this many for what I'm about to build, but you can just duplicate this down and it will nicely duplicate uh, in a smart way here. Okay, so this is how to make your table. Now, if I want the width to be 10, I can just click on the B one cell, I'll put in 10, and look what happens. All of a sudden, instantly, our min max values change. Uh, if I wanted to start uh, instead at one, of one, I'll start at maybe 25. So now you see 25 to 34 is our first, 35 to 44, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so just by changing these values, I can uh, modify everything in the table here. If it annoys you that we're starting at class zero, what you can do is highlight all these. And now I'm not gonna duplicate here, I wanna actually move these. So you can put your cursor anywhere on the edge and if I drag them up by one, it will move them. It also modifies the formula. So it shifted the, was that E3? So it was E4 before, but it shifted it up one because that value uh, zero got shifted up one. Uh, so if that class label annoys you, you can just move it up one like this. Uh, it doesn't annoy me, so I'm leaving it like this. 
All right, so here's how to make that table in a pretty automated way. Next up, we're gonna look how to do this with more specific requirements. And I'm gonna do that in the next video.